Hello everyone. Today we will be taking a look at how you can import a MIDI file into your Reaper and which obstacles you might encounter on your way through the process. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Right, so this is a really basic thing that you might want to do if you are starting out with Reaper. And I've got a pretty neat little MIDI file here, which is just working fine and containing all the information that I need. But I now want to get this into Reaper and apply some instruments to the notes within the MIDI file. Because in case you didn't know, MIDI is a format which describes several events which are related to instruments. So for example, it defines where a node should start and where it should end, which node it's meant to be. It defines all the information about the pitch wheel. It contains all various other information about mod wheel and a lot of other continuous controllers as well. And you now want to put this into Reaper and apply instruments to it, because by default, MIDI is silent. MIDI just contains information about nodes, and it's up to Reaper to interpret which node goes into which instrument. And now we are going to do exactly that. So in front of me, I've got a project and it contains one of my folder tracks, which I use for piano sketches all the time, one closed folder piano sketch armed. which is why it's exactly called piano sketch. And it is basically just a cine piano, which I've loaded instrument from cine samples, right? So now we want to import this. So we will go into the insert sub menu media file, e and we will pick media file here. Import. Okay, great. Let's pick that. So it's the Hallelujah Pentatonics version for SATB Choir, which is soprano alto tenor bass, right? And it's a MIDI file from musescore.com. Now we'll just hit enter on that and see what happens. MIDI file import dialog. Expand seven MIDI tracks and new Reaper tracks checkbox checked. So this checkbox asks us what it should do with the several MIDI tracks within this file. There are seven MIDI tracks in this file, and it asks us what we want to do. It can either expand them to several individual Reaper tracks, which is exactly what I want, or if we uncheck it, it would put all the tracks onto one Reaper track, which is most likely not what I want most of the time. Import MIDI tempo map to project tempo map at 1.1.00 checkbox not checked. Yep, I want to try that. Space checked. Let's import the MIDI tempo map, which will automatically fit our project to the tempo of the MIDI file. OK button. Now let's OK. Spin MIDI import. Hallelujah Pentatonics version for SATB choir.mscz.mid dialog. OK button. Import two channel MIDI and meta events as combo box single channel items on multiple tracks collapsed. OK, so this is interesting. If you've got MIDI items which contain events on several different channels, you can now decide what you want to do with them. Either you will get one multi-channel item on a track, or you will get single channel items on multiple tracks. So channels in MIDI is a concept that allows you to address multiple items with the same events without interfering with each other. Channels in MIDI do exist because when MIDI started out, synthesizers had to find a way to determine between which node in a MIDI file, for example, has to go to which instrument. Reaper is quite intelligent about this because it has tracks built in and it can route nodes to several hundreds instruments if you want to. But back in the day, synthesizers weren't as powerful. So they had to define MIDI channels for that. And every channel was assigned to a different instrument. By default, there are 16 MIDI channels. And in the general MIDI mapping, there is still an instrument assigned to every channel or channel groups. So for example, channel one might be some kind of piano, whichever kind of piano you want that could be changed with a synthesizer. And channel 10, for example, is most of the time mapped to the drum kit. So this is most likely what this file is doing here too. So let's figure this out. We can do either. Multi-channel item on a single track. Single channel items on multiple tracks. And I personally want to do the second one. Now, let's press OK on that. Always prompt. Can also be set in media slash MIDI preferences. Checkbox checked. Yeah, let's do that. OK button. Stay MIDI import. Hallelujah, Pentatonix version for SATB choir.mscz.mid dialog. OK button. 
Info two channel media meta events as combo box single channel items on multiple tracks collapsed. Ah, it's doing the same thing. So we still press OK. OK, we are back in the repo window. So let's see what happened. Four hallelujah pentatonic version for SAT beat wire dot MSCZ on one item. One closed fold of piano sketch on one item. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven, eleven hallelujah. OK, so we've got eight hallelujah tracks if i can see that correctly and they are not put into my track folder right now so i will just quickly do that i will go up to my folder one closed folder piano sketch on one item i just press alt and home i will open that open i will go in there to end the folder piano sketch end on one item i will take that one one track removed i remove it and i will go down now we'll paste it here. One track, one item, ten piano, ten piano, sketch end on one item. And now we we'll make sure to make it to track folder end again. Go up to the first one, make it a folder again. Go to the bottom one again. Folder, end of folder. Make it a folder end again. Why do I do this? Because I want all the MIDI tracks to route directly into my instrument which is just one piano. I could also apply multiple different instruments to the different tracks but for the experimentation. I just want everything to go through the piano, which should work just fine. Now let's play and see what happens. I want beat one zero percent. So this is obviously working, right? But only one track. This is usually an SATB choir mix, and we are just hearing like one of those. And this is because of MIDI and because how complete control the instrument that I'm working with right now is working. Because complete control only accepts information on channel one. So as long as that's the case, we will only hear what's coming in on channel one, which is only this one track. Now, how can we fix this? We can only hear this track because all of this track is on channel one, which is exactly what we want. But we now have to change everything else to go to channel one as well. And how do we do this? We go down to the track that we want to change. Select that one and select the item that's on the track. One item selected. Track view. With shift A. And now we go into the media editor by pressing Control alt e and in here we've got 499 events selected. We select all of them with Control A, and then we press Control F2, event properties dialog. which is the event properties dialog. And all we need to know is that we need to press Tab once, position, edit all channel, twice. Sorry. And in here, this is the channel combo box. And here we can select the channel that everything is going to. One. And we can select one and press OK. Okay. But now, if you play. I will just skip further into the song a bit. So you can hear that there's a bit more in the song now because we've got one more track in here. Now, I would repeat just the same for every other track in the project, for every other MIDI item, and route this to channel one. And we'll see us right afterwards and see how it sounds like. Okay, here we are, let's see. So it's kind of working, right? But there's one thing that is obviously noticeable here. So we've got this weird volume drops all over the place. And this is because some volume automation thing is happening to the instrument where it shouldn't go. Before actually routing everything to channel one, we had every instrument on a different MIDI channel, or at least every group of instruments. And 
The MIDI was applying several volume changes to the different choir sections, which now go out all on channel 1, which means all of them are going into complete control and manipulating the notes that are played by the piano, which absolutely messes everything up. So there are two ways how you can handle this. Either you take every individual channel and tweak it to the instrument that you actually want to apply it to by going through every individual event step by step. But as you've noticed, there are sometimes over 500 events on every channel. If you want to really create some great cover and stuff, you should most likely do this or see if you can do something about it to tweak it properly. But in our case, the easiest way of fixing this is to just remove all the CC events. So, as I said, there are MIDI notes within a MIDI file and there are CC events within a MIDI file. While the MIDI notes define where a MIDI note begins and where it ends and at which channel it goes, CC events apply automation effects to those notes, like volume changes, pitch changes, modulation information, and lots more. And those CC events are the reason why our volume fluctuates so much. So we will just get rid of those, and I will show you how to do this. First of all, let's select the track. One open for the piano sketch on one item. There's the first item. Let's select it. One hallelujah put at an expression for satpquire.mscz.mid. And now open it. Control Alt E. Midi. And now we need to work with the actions list. Let's press F4. Actions dialog filter. And now we search for select all CC events. Because there's no shortcut assigned to this. Let's see what it does. List one list. Description. Edit. Select all CC events in time selection, even if CC main is hidden, one of 11. That's not what we want. It's actually one of the last entries here, so let's go down. Description, 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 description. Select all CC events, 8 of 11. That is the one that we want. Hit enter on that. Midi take. And now let's press delete. Six events removed. Great. So we need to do this for every individual track. So we will see us right after I did this in just a second. Now I've removed all the CC events that might disturb our playing. Let's see what it sounds like. Right, so we still got the volume fluctuation. And the reason for this is because we have some instrument doubling going on. So in the score from your score, Two people are seeing the exact same note, which is fine and works quite well and sounds nice. But as soon as you want to route those all into one single instrument, like we're doing here, the sound is going to get disturbed because the later note will determine what's actually played. Because the later note is the shorter note, the longer note will automatically be cut off and be played at a lower velocity, so at a lower volume, than the previous one, which totally disturbs the feeling of the song here. So. Other than that, the piece is working, right? Let's skip a bit ahead. Bar two. Bar 54. <laughs> and that's what you're hearing here is the drums that obviously cannot be translated into a melodic instrument like the piano, right? Let's see if we can mute those. The drums, as I already said, are usually going on channel 10. So let's use the down arrow and search for the channel 10 ones. Six, for yeah, let's take that one and mute it. Muted. Let's continue searching. Again, Muted. I think there were just two tracks. Let's see if it fixes something. Uh -huh. Now that the arrangement is much more spread out across the octaves, things sound much nicer than before, right? So this is how you get a MIDI file loaded into Reaper. 
And now you could theoretically throw whichever VST I on every individual track and everything is going out through just one instrument in my case because I put everything into a folder and I put an instrument onto the folder track which creates a bus that everything goes through which is the folder with the instrument which is the piano and afterwards it will go right into the master track. And if you want to not do this but route every individual track into a separate instrument just like you would usually do in a full orchestrated arrangement, then you can easily do that. But now you know the obstacles that might come across your way. Note doubling, you might find yourself confronted with a lot of CC events, which mess up your arrangement, and a lot more. And now you know how to treat those. I hope that helped you somewhat and allow you to get your hands on your next MIDI file, just import it into Reaper, clean it up a bit, and then start creating your next new great music arrangement, make sure to send us a link in the comments to this video so that we can enjoy it as well. If you've got any questions or recommendations, just drop them in the comment section below the video. Like the video and subscribe to the channel if you feel like it, and we will see us next Monday. Thanks. Bye-bye.